Well, hello there. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I am going to be talking to you today about CMMC certification. What in the world is that, right? Well, I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully this will go nice and smoothly. And we're going to start our little presentation. So CMMC. Now, what this is, is this is the new cybersecurity maturity model requirements that the Department of Defense is going to be requiring all of their government contractors become CMMC certified by the end of around 2026-ish. And they are taking a crawl, walk, run approach, meaning this is they're not requiring everybody right out of the gate to have this. However, the sooner we're getting started on this, the better off we're going to be because some folks may have a little bit more work to do than others. It's very confusing. It can be very overwhelming. And sometimes a lot of folks don't know where to start. So we're going to put together by the end of this video, hard to believe, but by the end of this video, we are going to have the framework for our CMMC program all laid out, right? Okay, so first of all, what in the world is CMMC, you say? Okay, so you spend a little time on Google looking this up, and then you realize, ooh, uh, this is very similar to what we're supposed to already be self-assessing that we are doing, and in line with the DFARS NIST 800-171. Mm -hmm. Except there's a big difference with CMMC. One of the big differences is that now a third party assessor is going to be coming into your organization and they're going to assess whether or not you're following the cybersecurity regulations. Yep. So this should be no problem, right? All right, let's just run around and gather up all of our documents, our hardware device inventory, employee cybersecurity training, systems access trackers, password management, incident response, system security plan, and we're going to put them all nice and neatly in our CMMC file document holder, right? Oh, wait, we don't have any of those things? Okay, well, that's okay. Take a big deep breath because what we're going to do is we're going to map out a nice little roadmap that's going to walk us through how we can start our CMMC certification without having a heart attack. We're going to start with something very simple, the employee list. We're going to take that list and for each employee we're going to answer eight questions what computer access are they using to do their job is their access limited specifically to what their job duties are which devices do they use do they have a personal unique login only for them which networks are they using when they need to get to the internet or they need to get into one of these software applications are they involved in anything with the company with any Department of Defense contracts? Have they had cybersecurity training? And the last question, have they read and signed an employee code of conduct? So now let's talk about Meredith. She works in the accounting department. Specifically, she does the accounts receivable. So we ask her, okay, so what necessary access does she need? Well, she needs access to the accounting department and the act part of the CRM, specifically the accounts receivable. She uses QuickBooks and she has email, company email, and she uses some Google Drive um, documents to keep track of some of the vendor information. Is her access limited to her job duties? No, Meredith is an admin and she has access to everything. Which devices does she use for her work? Well, she has a workstation at the corporate office. She receives emails on her personal phone. Does she have a personal unique login for all of these systems that she's logging in? Yes, she does. Which networks is she using when she is logging in? Well, when she's at work, she's at the ABC headquarters using their network and she uses public Wi-Fi and home Wi-Fi to check her emails. Is she involved in anything with the you know, DOD contract? Yes, she processes the payments that the government makes for the purchase of these goods that the company supplies them. Has she had cybersecurity training? No. And has she read the employee code of conduct? No. Now we're going to go and we're going to look at Stanley. Stanley works in the sales department. So we say, Stanley, what do you need for a computer access? And he says, well, I need sales access in the CRM system. I have a sales tracker in my Google Docs and I have email. Can you check, is all of his access limited to only his sales functions? Yes, it is. Which devices does he use? Well, Stanley has a laptop and he receives emails on his phone. Does he have unique logins for each of the software systems he's logging into? Yes, he does. Which network is he using? 
whichever one he can connect to the internet. We're not here to judge. We're just here to keep track of what's actually happening right now. Is he involved with anything that has to do with a DOD contract? Yes. He's the one that coordinates the quantity of the purchases of the widgets that the uh, company is selling to the government. And he has not had any cybersecurity training and he has not read an employee code of conduct. Now our last employee is Daryl and he works in the shipping department, specifically the packaging part of the shipping department. So what necessary computer access does he have? Well, he needs access to the inventory adjustments in the CRM system when he's packing these things up. He also has email that he gets on his phone. Is uh, his access limited to his job duties? Yes. Which device is he using? There's a workstation in the shipping department and he also receives emails on his phone. Uh, does he have a personal unique login? Nope, everybody in the shipping department uses the same login and the same computer. So which networks is he using? Well, again, when he's at work, he's on the ABC network and then he's on any Wi-Fi he can, he can connect with. Is he involved in anything with the DOD contract? Yep, because he is packaging and shipping the widgets that the government purchases. Has he had cybersecurity training? Nope. Has he read and signed the employee code of conduct? Nope. All right, so now we look at all this fabulous information that we just got just by answering eight questions for each of the employees. We've started an inventory, a device inventory. We know that Meredith has a workstation. We know that she uses her phone. We know that Stanley is a laptop and he uses his personal phone. Daryl has a workstation in the, in the shipping department. We know which software applications they're using. Meredith is in accounting and QuickBooks and Google Docs. Stanley's got his CRM, the sales part. He's got a sales tracker. And Daryl is in the inventory department, part of the CRM. And he's got email. We know which networks they're using to access this information. So when they're in-house, they're using the in-house Wi-Fi. And when they're out, they're pretty much using any Wi-Fi that they can. Again, not here to judge. We're just here to gather up the current information. Which of the employees is, has something to do with the CMMC, the Department of Defense contract? They all do. And oh, do they have access that's limited to their jobs? Uh, well, Meredith, no, Meredith can access everything, but the other two, yes. And this is very good because we want to make sure that we are limiting access, but we'll get into that later. And the access control tracker, because when you, when everybody has a unique login, we can track who's logging in, who's logging out. And that's a very important thing to be able to see. So Meredith has unique logins, so we can track where she's going in and out of. Stanley has unique um, logins. Daryl, everybody in the shipping department is using the same login, so we can't tell if it's him or if it's one of his coworkers. So that's what that is. And nobody has had security training. That's because we don't have any cybersecurity training in place. And we don't have a code of conduct, so nobody has signed that. So now, just by answering those eight questions, everything we just reviewed, we have the start of the framework for the entire CMMC program. So now we can take our little CMMC document file holder and we can create. We have a device inventory, software application log, network access log, system access controls. This is sounding so fancy, like we really have our act together. And we know which employees CMMC is applicable to. We have access control logs because everybody has a unique login except for Daryl. And we know that we don't have any security training, but we can start a file because we're going to put some in place. And then we have uh, no employee code of conduct, but we're going to start a file because we're going to put one of those in place. So that's it. In that short amount of time, we're able to take those eight questions and turn them into a really great start to the CMMC. So I hope this has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.